My name's Joseph DeLacy and I write Eco Horror. Meat is a story set at some point in human future, somewhere in the UK, probably a grim northern town, um, possibly post-cataclysmic. And it's a place where all the townspeople are religiously required to eat flesh. Um, there are two power factions in the town. One is a religious faction and the other is a corporate faction and between them they control uh, the, the dogma and all the food uh, and they, they have the whole town under a kind of ethical wrap which no one seems to be able to escape from. And in this world there's a bolt gunner who stuns the cattle uh, before they're exsanguinated and processed for meat. And his name is Richard Shanti, um, who is the coolest, most efficient uh, bolt gunner in the history of the town. And um, we begin with him just beginning to have some doubts about his line of work, even though they call him the ice pick. He's starting to have second thoughts about what, what it is he does day to day. Um, and as we go into the story, we, we discover the truth about the town of Auburn and, uh, and, the, and the rather dreadful things that are going on there. I probably am best known for writing horror, but I actually enjoy writing um, fantasy and I do write some science fiction from time to time as well. And I suppose if you look at Meat and Garbage Man in particular, you can see elements of, of fantasy and elements of science fiction in both novels, but I think that it's, it's horror that's come to the fore in those. Um, more recently, there's Black Feathers, of course, which is, again, um, inspired by the ecology and the environment, but is much more of a fantasy um, with two um, young characters who are, who are questing uh, for a, myth a mythological figure called the Chroma, um, and you know, and in finding him and discovering who he is, they they either can or cannot save the world, depending on whether the Chroman is our saviour or the final incarnation of evil. Um, I write a lot of short fiction as well. Um, that was collected in Splinters, which came out towards the end of uh, 2012. Um, and then there's Blood Fugue, which is uh, an ecological vampire story set in the Sawtooth Mountains of Idaho, where um, there's a guardian of a small community known as Jimmy Kerrigan, and he carries a strain of, of illness, uh, which, which allows him to protect the people in the town uh, whenever they're attacked by fugues, which are a kind of, uh, sort of a natural, naturally occurring vampire. It's a bit like tetanus that's in the ground. This disease is in the area and every now and again it pops up and people become ill with it. And Kerrigan's job is to, is to stop them from um, feeding too much on the people who live in the town. But unfortunately, um, as, your, as your fugue hunter um, status increases and as you age, you become more and more susceptible to catching the illness properly yourself, so he faces basically himself as, the, as his final enemy. Um, and um, well that's about it for novels and short stories I guess for the moment. <laughs> um, well the short answer is it's probably the nicest thing anybody's ever said uh, about me and for it to be somebody like Stephen King uh, elevates it to a level that's hard to describe but I can tell you that um, when that piece of news came in, it was a text from, from my publisher at the time back in sort of 2007, 2008, and we were on holiday, we were on a walking holiday uh, in the mountains somewhere in Europe, I guess it was Austria, something like that, and, um, and the phone went and I had a look and it said, guess what Stephen King thinks about your book? And uh, I had a look at this thing and fortunately there was a bench nearby and I, went, I just went and sat down and I looked out across the valley and thought oh, this is the day that it all changes and uh, but of course it wasn't
<laughs> These things take a lot longer, but, um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, yeah, a highlight. Well, that's a tricky one. It would imply that I set out to send a message to people by writing the book, and that really isn't the case. Um, I think the important thing to remember is that if you, if you have a message that you want to get across, you perhaps ought to do that in non-fiction. Because if you set out to write a work of fiction and your agenda is to bring a message to people, then really you're in the evangel ev evangelical camp and I don't think that works. I'm not sure that I even have the skill to sit down and say, right, this is the message that I want to give to my readers and this is how I'm going to do it. It's tricky enough to write a book that people will enjoy. And I believe that as an author, your job is to entertain people and that's the most important thing. In fact, that's the, that is the priority. <clears throat> Anything that happens after that is, is a bonus. Now the fact is that meat has affected people, it's affected me, it's, it's made me a vegetarian. Uh, the research I did was really disturbing to me and so I, I, ha I haven't eaten any flesh at all for over five years. Um, but then, I, then when the first reviews of the book were coming in, in its original edition about five or six years ago, I was noticing that people were saying, I'm now vegan having read this book or now I'm, I've gone back to vegetarianism having read this book, or I'm seriously reconsidering how I eat and what I eat. And um, that was just like a, a wild but wonderful bonus for me, really. Um, so, personally speaking, I explore ideas in fiction, but I don't do that in order to make other people feel or think differently. It's really more for my own personal development that I can, in, in a story, you can really take an idea to every possible corner and, and in doing that, uh, you, you understand a thing better. So I feel that I understand the whole idea of, of, of the ethics of brutality, killing in order to sustain one's own life. I think I understand that better. And if, if other people do as a result of, of my novel, that's a, that's a wonderful thing.